I think I'm live. Hey guys, this is Jen with Jen's Den Art. Y'all give me a second. I'm trying to figure this out because we're going outside live. We're live. So yeah, hey, we are live out here in Northwestern Montana and we are gonna show you um, today how to frame our 24 by 36 canvas that we painted over the last three days. This is Michael, my husband. Say hi. Hi. And um, so we're here today with Jen's Den Art and we're gonna show you how we frame our canvas. Um, I just wanna make sure you know that we just finished a pop-up paint party and we painted what's called the Barnyard Bliss pop-up paint party. And we have a huge canvas that we painted. Now, we have a lot of junk back here because this is our little work area. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn the, uh, the camera around and I am going to try to um, film this. And um, I, don't, I can't see any comments because I'm on StreamYard. So let me see if I turn this way, if I can see comments. No, I'm on my cell phone. So um, I'm trying to figure this out as we go. So let me turn the camera around. I do know how to do that. Let me turn the camera around and then I'm gonna give Michael the floor. Right Let's on. see. Okay, there we go. Well, so first I want to point out that we always have a deer that comes and hangs out in the yard. Um, if you look carefully, Jen, paint start painting over there. I saw him a minute ago. Uh, and just pan pan across the yard you may see him i'm not sure just keep panning and don't stop and just keep going because he moves every now and <laughs> what so anyway uh we have a deer <laughs> we have many deer actually so listen the first things i want to say about framing a canvas uh, one of the most important things other than being safe one of the most important things is realizing the quality of canvas that you buy so technically this is marketed from Hobby Lobby as a 24 by 36. So the 24s are the short sides on my right and left. The 36 is on the top and bottom. However, because the canvas stretches and we manipulate it when we paint and we pull and we carry it home from the store and we stop and get Dairy Queen and all that other good stuff, sometimes the canvas gets stretched out. So it's very important to measure the canvas. Don't just go by the size that's on the package of 24 by 36. This happens to be 24 by 36 by 30, I mean by 23 and 7 eighths by 36. So anyway, so our goal, I'm sorry. I, I just want to talk to you about, I. I um, bought, I purchased a thin canvas, but it is professionally finished on the back. So um, this canvas is a, what, like seven eighths of an inch. Yes, it's like it an, an inch um, wide. So you can also buy canvases that are like two inches wide. And, you know, that's another, uh, another option that you can use. Um, you want to tell them what supplies you're using for this? Yes. So... You know, I'm fortunate enough to have um, a multitude of supplies to use to make the job easier when I'm framing. Uh, but if you want to go bare, bare basics, you buy a hand miter saw from either, you know, some from some hardware store uh, and you literally cut your angles. Uh, this would be a 45 degree angle. However, again, some canvases, depending upon the quality, are not exactly a 45 degree angle. So anyway, I have a miter saw or a chop saw, what we call it. Uh, it's got a fine blade on it. It didn't come with a fine blade. It came with a thick carpenter blade, but this is a fine blade. Ginger's telling me to hurry, so I shouldn't no, I tell you guys you about this. No, I just want you to do the basic. Just tell them so what don't you tell are them. doing. Okay. You, saw. Wood. What? Where did staple. you get the wood? What size wood did you get? You know what I'm saying? Ginger and I are going to be looking at each other doing this whole <laughs> video. I can tell. It's going to take a long time to frame this, so I just don't want it to take like two hours. It's not going to take long? Okay, good. I'm glad to know that. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
I wish I could see their comments. I wish you uh, don't you have your phone. Let me hold it and I can talk while you go get the laptop. And I'll you want to hold, hold this? Yes. Okay. Yes. This would be awesome. All right. So again, I have a miter saw. This is what you use. I've been putting this at a 45 degree angle. I'm just going to show you that picture right there. It's a 45 degree angle. It's easy to adjust. You can do that by reading the instruction book. Now, depending upon how you want your frame to come out, right? So I cut my frames using this piece of board, which is a one by two. I cut my frames with the wood standing up. And so we'll put this up like this. And if you notice if the blade comes down, it's going to cut the board exactly the way that I want it. Now to cut the other side, I have to flip this board over and cut it the proper length so that the sides match up. And I'm going to show you an example that I cut previously so that the sides match up perfectly for a 24 inch piece of frame. And this is actually the 23 by seven eighths. That's why it's a little long. All right, so Jen's back, and I'm going to give her the phone. Uh, hopefully, you're not looking at my wrinkles or the bags beneath my eyes. But if you are, that's cool. All right, babe, here you go. Hang on one second. Let me, let me... All right, I also have a staple gun. Now, this is a pneumatic staple gun. You don't have to use a pneumatic staple gun. You can get a small hammer with some fine finishing nails and use that to secure the board uh, that we cut to the canvas. I like using a pneumatic air gun because it's quick, it's easy, and when I'm making a multitude of frames, it goes by really fast. With a pneumatic air gun, you have a pneumatic tank, or excuse me, an air tank. This air tank and the, and the hose that comes with it, along with that pneumatic air gun, was very cheap. Oh, was very cheap at a Home Depot's. Now here, at Home Depot, excuse me, here's Ginger. You can tell, guys, we're not professional enough, but this is us, this is real. Jen, I told them almost everything. So if you have any comments and you want to sit in the shade, let me know and I can answer any questions. Okay. I'm going to try to check comments as we go. All right. I got this going. All right. I don't want the painting out in the sun. Okay. So I measured the painting ahead of time. And like I said, I got... Uh, one side being 24 inches and one side being 23 and 7 eighths. And then the top and the bottom of the painting are the canvas being 36 inches. So I went ahead and cut my 24 inch and 23 by 7 eighths ends. And now I'm going to cut the two 36 inch ends. And you're welcome to look at that. Your finger's almost in the way of the camera. Jen. You heard me? Yeah, I got it. Okay. You want to come over here and watch this? No, not just yet. Give okay. me just a sec. Want me to cut or wait? Yeah, no, you're good. I'm just trying to. Okay, so you're good. Means keep talking. Yep, keep going. Okay, and you've got the camera centered on me. Mm -hmm. Is it showing my stomach? Do I need to suck in or anything? Yes, a lot. <laughs> I'm just playing. All right, All right, now I see comments. Hey, Donna and Nancy and Amy and Tina and Dawn. Okay, now I can see comments. So if uh, if y'all have any questions, um, we can answer questions as we go. You ready, Jen? Yeah, I'm ready. May I go to cutting? Just yes. the bare basics like you had said before? Yes. Okay, so I need to cut two inches, or excuse me, two pieces of board that are 36 inches long. Now, because I am not a professional carpenter, nor am I really that adequate, but... I do a good enough job to make sure the frame fits very securely, snugly, and it adds a lot of value to your canvas painting. And so that is a tip for you that if you want to sell your paintings in marketplaces or on Etsy or anything like that, adding the frame adds value. All right. So we need to measure this 36 inches. Now, I will probably not use this end because I just don't like the way that end is, is acting. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that end off, but I'm going to cut it at the angle that I want. And then I'm going to measure my 36 inches. So once again, now the way that I use this saw is the safe way to use it, okay? So I'm holding my board. I'm holding it flat against the saw. It's going to rev up first. I'm going to cut it. Then I'm going to let off the, uh, the power so that the blade stops. <laughs>
That's the proper way to do it. Now, from this point, I will measure my 36 inches. Where do you measure your 36 Very inches? Very good, Jen. From? So these bottom end of the, the board of the frame are the ends that will actually meet. So I will measure. I like to pull my ruler out 36 inches already. I will measure from the end of the board. Give me just a second. I want to make sure it's exact. All right. 36 inches. All right. So I've got my 36 inches done. Now it's time to cut. Now remember what I said. When I first cut this board, it made that cut. In order to cut the other side so that it matches up, I have to flip it over and show the cut end. And now, Jen, I'm going to get in the way of the camera. And now I line up my 36 inches. And I cut. <laughs> So basically the, the, sh so you notice you have an angle here. You have a long side and a short side. So the short sides are 36 inches from the short, from one short side to the other short sides. Exactly. Now I'm going to measure this just to make sure that I did the right thing. Right on. So that's one 36 inch. Now I cut the other 36. As Ginger said, which was perfectly said, it's from the short end to the next short end. So again, I pull out 36 inches because that's what makes it easier for me. And notice I'm using a mechanical pencil. If you use a thick pencil with thick lead, your line may be a little off. Yes, the inside corner to the inside corner. Exactly, April. Um. April will be smarter than everybody. <laughs> um, is Sandy says, is this painting on your site that anyone can go back and paint it? Um, if you're a tribe member, yes, it will be on the website. If you were in the pop-up paint party, it's still in there. But other than those two areas, it is not a painting that's available yet. Eventually, it will become a painting for an individual um, purchase, but that usually takes me about two or three weeks to get it up as an individual purchase rather than being in the tribe or the pop up paint party that we just had. You ready? Yes. All right, try to keep it to just the basics, Jim, because this takes a long time. <laughs> He's getting on to me because I was like, you're talking right. too much. Right, we talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going to cut this 36 inches in length. There we go. Let's measure that bad boy. Now we already stained. I don't know if Michael told you this when I went inside to get I the iPad. Um, I'm sorry, Michael. Sandy, I don't know why he's sorry. Jen got the look today. Yes, she did. <laughs> and if you Teresa, know, I don't know how long you've been a part of this group, but you know us very well. And, and if and if you know me, you know when I get the look. <laughs> So if you're just starting out and you're trying not to spend a lot of money, you're going to have a little struggle on securing these frames together. But it's still possible. Jen, you got me? Mm-hmm. I'm going to come in closer. Yeah. I'm trying not to shake the camera too much because I know it's very... I'm holding the camera with my hand, so it's very shaky, and I apologize for that. So, here's my frame. So the idea is that 
I put these together as such. Jen, get a close up of this. Mm -hmm. How the frame fits. Did you talk to them about we already stained it and all of that? I think you just did, didn't you? I, I kind of did, but then I, I stopped okay. myself. So there's no problem with staining the board that you're going to work with ahead of time. The only exposed pieces are the pieces that you cut. It's not going to be seen. However, if you don't have a good fit, it will be seen. Ginger has touched up before, dried it off before the canvas is actually placed within the frame, and it looks wonderful. Yeah, and you can even buy um, the wood stain pins instead of you know using like the the uh what the color stain that i use for everything that i do is dark walnut and get a close shot uh, a close close up of that jim so you see there's some of the areas that i have not stained and over here mm -hmm. as well i'm gonna have to touch and we're it gonna up. Have to touch it up now listen these boards aren't expensive uh these boards because they're not expensive will have deformities in them, which will alter the frame when you put them together. Like I think you can see them. So the whole point being is, is that deal with it. We're, we're not, we're not framing up um, um, the Mona Lisa, but we are framing up things that we can be proud of and that we can sell and they can pay for our membership and we can pay uh, our tithe and we can help other people if we need to. So, like I said, I use a pneumatic air gun. So my goal right now, is to secure these two sides. I bought something to help me do that since I am by myself. This I bought at Home Depot for a little over $20. It helps hold the frame in place. As you can tell, or you can imagine, I'm gonna show you how that works. It helps hold a corner. It helps hold the frame, which is a corner in place. So I'm gonna secure this down. He's being all smart on me today. <laughs> Ginger. Baby, I'm always smart. <laughs> All right. I know you are. And so too. these are just C clamps that actually come with this. Uh, so frame. what? I don't understand what you're getting. So I am do. putting. Come over here. So I'm putting this C clamp in this hole, and what I'm doing is I'm securing it to this board so that this doesn't move. Oh. Only this. Okay. Moves. Okay. All right. Now my goal. My goal. Let me make sure. One of them just doing? a little longer than the other one. And so the goal is, is to place this frame at an angle in here on this point. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, this is getting fancy. Well, it, when you're by yourself, this makes it a lot easier. And Still so, don't understand what you're doing. Okay, so I am creating an angle with my board. So you're gonna, you're gonna, you're creating a ninety degree angle. I am creating and you're a gonna, ninety degree angle. You're putting it together before you put it on the I canvas. I am using it to be secured, and if you'll get a picture of this, these two pieces can line up. Then it enables me to tighten them. Now imagine trying to do this without a machine or a, a clamp, and it's very difficult. So you can actually make the angle. Now you may say, well, Michael, that doesn't look like it's secure. The reason being is because the board is a little um, uh, okay. warped. So what do you do now? So I will make sure I got a firm clamp on that. And now I will nail it. Now look at that angle. Okay. Look how secure that is. Good. Now I've got my hands to use to either use a fine finishing nail and a hammer or a pneumatic air gun. And that's what we're going to use. We're going to use a pneumatic air gun. Now, Ginger probably doesn't want me to show you this, but I've already preloaded it with nails. The reason why I chose these nails is because I know that this has got to go through the wood as such, and it's got to go into the canvas. So you got to buy the right uh, length of nail. This is an inch and a quarter nail. Yeah. So the, did you tell them the, what, what, where you got the wood? Like what exactly the wood is? Well, I, I did, and, and then you told me. 
just to keep to the basics. So it's Home Depot, and it's one by two uh, it's a piece one, of furring strip. Yeah, it's called a one by two furring strip from Home Depot. There you go. And what is it like? And Ginger for, actually turned me on to that. I didn't know they had one by two furring strips, but it's perfect for framing. Um. And what was your question? What is it like? It's like an eight foot 